Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL 13 group. Shoot, I lost track of the group. I think this is group C. We have um, Masucci starting in the bottom left hand corner as the red Zerg. He is a Brazilian Zerg player. And I'm not sure if he is going to be my first Brazilian player that I'm highlighting or not. Bottom right hand corner, we have Crane. Starting as the yellow Protoss Crane, wanting to once again make it towards... So last season had a lot of success. He's definitely been an up-and-coming Protoss player. If you have not seen him uh, around, uh, keep an eye out for him because I feel like he's hes kind of... How do I put this? I feel like he's one of those guys that's up-and-coming that's going to be around for a while. He's definitely been around the Rogues Gallery scene, um, done commentary there. I expect him... Basically, it's like one of those... I kind of like looking out for these guys in the U.S. North American scene where it's like, ah, oh, these are the guys that are going to be around uh, and kind of fill in. Him, father... Um, I'm forgetting a bunch of people, but like, yeah, people that are that I'm excited to see in the scene on that side. So double excitement for me, uh, Masucci, Brazilian player, and then you know Crane, uh, Crane, able to highlight him. Pretty intelligent guy. Uh, looks like he is going to opt. Let's see if he's going to opt for. No, he's going to open. I was expecting a forge first. He's going to open up a gateway first. Opposite corner, we are seeing an overpool, very safe from Masucci. That should force a cannon. Looks like he is going to get first scout off with this probe into the bottom left-hand corner. This is on Good Night, which I'm not going to highlight this time as far because I got to assume that you guys are familiar with this map. Having It's been out there for a, while, for a, a bit. One thing for Crane, he's going to be able to at least see this. So let's see how he reacts to this. So I was going to say, what did I say? I said force a cannon. He doesn't even have a forge yet. So that this is going to put Crane in a situation where he needs to keep the Zelts in a more defensive situation. It can be an opportunity, depending on how Masuchi plays it, if he produces the initial six Zerglings, where there can be uh, an opportunity. It looks like that he's going to have that Overlord of that natural expansion as well. There can be an opportunity for a run-by and a disruption of Zerglings into the main. Looks like he's got the initial four Zerglings. There's the additional Zerglings being produced. A little bit of harassment from Crane. He's already got that natural expansion up. He's also got a drone camped at the 9 o'clock very, very early. He's going to miss a bit of mining time as a result of that, sending that extremely rapidly out. I think it was initially sent as a scouting drone, but then had to return back to home base, or it had to be utilized, I guess, otherwise, because this Overlord already finding that natural expansion. The Zealot initially thinking about moving out and getting potentially on the dro uh, drone line to push things back. Second Zealot's now on the front, but then thinking better of it as the Zerglings are starting to make their way towards Crane's main. The Zelt's now grouped up. It looks like they're going to pass. So that Zergling, initial two Zerglings, able to pass by. Now, here's the thing. Zerglings, in sufficient numbers, can outmaneuver Zealots. It looks like that front door is still not sealed. So they're going to be able to walk right into that main. One Zergling almost getting taken out. But especially if Zergling speed is utilized, these Zerglings can be extremely annoying. Already walking out to the north. So think of this as like probe scouting, but much more deadly. Bigger teeth, bigger claws sector sector natural expansion is warping in we have a forge also mor morphing in morphing in i guess technically is warping in so now the zealots having to play protection duty for the probes but with four zerglings in here they can pretty rapidly take a probe down so crane has to be extra careful with his micro and make sure he's playing this game of cat and mouse in the meantime that nine o'clock base is up i believe that was scouted by that probe scout in the meantime we do have an extractor and a layer morphing in more Zerglings have been produced, and that probe getting wiped out, that should force potentially two cannons, to be honest. A assim simulator warping in. So I think what Masuchi is planning here is, is, first of all, building a lot of Zerglings underneath. I don't think he's going for a bust here, but what I think he is trying to force here is if he can get up and maybe attack these probes, maybe delay the cybernetic score, if he makes his way towards... Uh, actually, the Zerglings pushing forward testing that front door before that cannon's up. The Zealot already there pulling probes off the line. If he can delay Crane's economy for long enough and go ahead and get this layer tech up, plop down a spire, he very likely might have Mutalisks before Crane has anything to defend it. And it is looking that way currently. There's that cybernetic score warping in. Hasn't lost any probes, but he's had to expend a lot of minerals. So four, four Zealots, first of all, to defend against this instead of just the regular two or three that you might want to plug the front door with. Uh, the cybernetic score feels significantly late. Masucci playing a little bit of a lower drone count overall. 
but I do not think it is going to hurt him. It looks like he's already positioning to go ahead and plop down that Spire. So let's see if Crane is going to be able to get that Stargate down. Wisely needs to do so. So there's that Stargate. There's the Spire morphing in. As far as the timing, he should still be able to get a Corsair out. But the question is, is will he have enough Corsair? Will he have the wherewithal to get cannons down in his main? He's completely lacking scouting information at this stage of the match. Stage of the match, it looks like he was able to wipe out one of the Zerglings that was harassing the main. Let's continue. So now this is kind of relegated to scouting. One thing for Masuchi is he might have wanted to actually move that Overlord out. And now the Zealots, this is a nice play from Crane. He's like, okay, you know what? The Zealots, now that that cannon's back there, now that there's fewer Zerglings, I'm just going to go ahead and press, let the Zealots do the scouting. More Zerglings being produced. So this, with the fourth hatchery on the front. In response to this, the Zelts returning back to home base. So Crane actually getting what he was looking for. Masuchi still sitting at 26 drones overall. Corsair on the way. Citadel of Dune plopping down. This Overlord is going to be a sacrificial lamb. Spire is going to be just about finishing. So on Masuchi's side, it looks like he's already relegating to push back to... Rather than going for any sort of needless play, it looks like he's going to go ahead and sit back and, uh, and work with the four hatch play which has been very very popular these days this overlord yeah not long for life and i believe that's going to put masuchi in the red he didn't ha so he's producing the initial scourge the corsair ignoring the overlord initially trying to make its way wants to get the scouting this is the very stir i feel like this is current meta but i feel like the meta is actually um, pushing away from this right now where to get the four hatch uh drop a hydro stand behind it and then more or less force your protoss opponent to respect a potential mutilus counter so basically it's kind of and this is where the scourge can play a really big role they're hunting down that corsair crane needs to keep this corsair alive otherwise he's going to be very delayed well not very delayed but sufficiently delayed in the mid game looks like he is able to get back to home base with that corsair but essentially the current meta now is and it looks like crane is on top of it he's is, is zealots and corsairs in the mid game Look for opportunities to go ahead and for it. So basically, the Zerg Sim City's behind this, tries to macro up. The Protoss looks to send Zealot attack forces to either force units to be built, Scourge looking to assassinate, looking to scout, but potentially catch a Corsair as well. Looks like it is going to scout. It's going to see a single cannon there to the north before getting wiped out. No cannon at the natural expansion, although there are the cannons to the north where they could be able to retreat and potentially defend. A couple Scourge. I like the, that they're just kind of positioned around, but a little, maybe a little bit of an overproduction. The Zergling's testing that front door as well. A couple of them getting expended. The Zealots moving out with Zealot leg speed. They have level one weapons and that upgrade advantage. So they're looking to get something accomplished. There's already Hydralisks at the natural expansion and a decent sized Sim City. These Hydralisks do not have any upgrades, however. <clears throat> Rushing out to go ahead and meet them and delay them a little bit. The Zergling's now coming in from the rear and it's gonna come down to these Hydralisks to defend this front door. But it look, and it looks like they are up to it. Several Zealots already wiped out. Masuchi drawing, delaying to allow additional use to be built and actually pulling the Zealots to the north. And so I take it back. It looks like they were speed upgraded, not range upgraded. Psystorm now being upgraded in the rear. These Corsairs eating an initial Scourge. And this is kind of the play from this stage is move those Corsair out. Looks like they are going to be able to catch an Overlord. Do what damage you can. Uh... Pick off overlords, try to slow the economy down that way. Usually I, I prefer this as more a combination attack of move the zealots into the midfield, use the corsairs to clear out the overlords. Uh, I, I did a game earlier with Dreamer where he did this very, very efficiently. And it more or less clear the overlords out like right here and make sure this area is cleared out. Make sure basically your opponent's in the dark, then have the zealots fielded and force your zerg opponent to, have, to overproduce units in the mid game to defend and plop down additional sunken because they don't know where you're going to attack or if you're expanding or other things like that. It looks like now Crane's starting to move around with those Corsairs. Only has a handful of Zealots. Right now things, I think going more in uh, Masuchi's favor. Let's see if he drops what can be critical here. He is getting that Lurker uh, upgrade. It is having enough evolution chambers and keeping the upgrade war up because oftentimes what happens in these matches these days is it comes down to Protoss having double forge getting an upgrade advantage and keeping that upgrade advantage into the late game. In the meantime, we have seven gateways, robotic facility being added on. Some Hydralis pecking away at the front. Psystorm is upgraded. 
There are going to be High Templar with Psystorm available. They need to be careful because this is also oftentimes where Zerg will look to do a tech switch into Mutalisk to potentially run and gun down those Templar in the background. But right now it looks like Masuchi is just going to go ahead and sit. He's already built several hatcheries additionally here at the 9 o'clock base. So he's sitting at 6 hatcheries overall as far as a mid-game play. The Hydralisk is absorbing, doing a bit of damage to those Zelts. Looks like he's staying, keeping pace with the upgrades, has level 1 spine damage. Some Zealots managed to sneak out, and this is what I like. Sneak out from the dark, they're going to go ahead and engage at the 9 o'clock location. However, there are Hydralisks there, so rather than expending them, he's just going to go ahead and back off. But this again forces Masuchi to kind of think about not pushing a contain too hard, because potentially if he moves all of those Hydralisks to that natural expansion... The Zelts might be able to sneak around and get some damage done at the 9 o'clock, particularly without a Sunken in place. Level 2 Spines being upgraded. Interesting, we, and we do see the armor being upgraded behind this. That's finishing right now. A lot of Dragoons, High Templar, etc. in position. The Corsairs moving out, pecking away at some of these Overlords, trying to get that vision down. A bunch of Lurkers and Hydralusks now in position for Masuchi. He wants to go ahead and try to go for that Contain. An Observer is here. They're decently spread, and once you have that Lurker contained in place, it can be very difficult to evict. There are enough Dragoons, however. It's actually... Wow, this is an interesting play. Crane's going to go ahead and take out his own gateway to open up his front doors. Some Zealots engaging some Hybelos to the north, and that's going to clean up that attack force. But the Dragoons leading, they should actually be able to... I think this is sufficient Dragoons where they should be able to deal with this Hydralisk Lurker force. As long as the Dragoon leads and the Zealots come from behind, they also have the support Psy Storm with plenty of energy to deal with any Hydralisks that are moving up to engage this. Crane being very patient. Beautiful size storm right there. But Masuchi able to pick off the Observer to once again delay Crane from moving out and grabbing that third base. And you can see all sorts of... I, I like this, just in case there was a drop incoming. Sneaking some Hydralisks to that corner. Continuing to push this contain, he's also going to try to grab a fourth expansion in the upper left-hand corner. So delaying, delaying Crane, trying to capitalize on the fact that Crane is contained and needing to bust out. He needs to be careful because this is kind of the stage of the match where Protoss, yeah, they can break out, but sometimes they can go out and maybe take out a base as well. The Hydralis moving in, their High Templar again storming, and again that Observer getting picked off. A great pick off once again. The Hydralis now pushing up. Another Psy Storm, catching both the Lurkers and the Hydralisks. Still five Lurkers there, more Hydralisks grouping up. And once again, Crane is going to need to wait for this Observer, pushing forward. Let's see if the Hydralisks can sneak up and pick it off once again. Crane being much more careful, having the last two Observers picked off. Another great Psy Storm as the Hydralisks are approaching. More Lurkers, more Hydralisks going in to fill in the ranks. The Zealots now engaging this attack force. More Hydralisks pushing in. More incredible Psy Storm, though. Crane Psy Storms have been on point. Masuchi has just had them bundled up. But Masuchi again picking off the Observer. Another Observer moving in. So it looks like Crane is going to be able to break the contain. Let's see if he is going to be able to go ahead and grab his third base. It looks like there are Archons. Not exactly the unit, you, the unit you want to engage against the uh, Hydralis Lurker combination. More Hydralis pressing forward, but it feels like Crane has been delayed for a long enough period of time that Masuchi has been able to just constantly reinforce, and he's still not fully out of this contain. I also want to say kudos for Crane to, for keeping these Corsairs alive. It looks like that's getting picked off. Pylon being dropped. It's quickly wiped out, and more Hydralis pouring in, harassing this army. The Hydralis going... no Nothing there to pick off the Observer. The Dragoons trying to do damage from that back corner. Level 1 armor is there, but level 2 spines is there for the Hydralis as well. Which is exactly what you want for just kind of this continue suppressing contain. And Masuchi looks like he's going to go ahead and shove Crane back into his base. Just through pure production. Because honestly, Crane's Psy Storms were just on top of it. And he's delayed long enough. Yeah, there's GG from Crane. He's realizing he's not going to be able to break this contain out. He's not going to be able to establish that third base. And Masuchi just, yeah, persistently pressing the Hydralisks forward. Having an overwhelming economy. And I think the a critical component there might have been the uh, level 2 spines. And staying on top of that uh, upgrade path right there to make sure that those Hydralisks were just hitting hard. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
We will continue. I think I have replays for Group D uh, for the Twitch audience. You're going to see... I'm not sure how much I'm going to have out of this particular group as far as replays because replay uploading for the round of 32 is optional. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.